water and its treatment. In this chapter, we will see the subtopics of sources of water. We will see first where the water comes from and where we will use them. Sources of water were mainly divided into the rainwater, which will go to in turn the rivers or ponds or lakes. The next main source of the water is sea. Sea water is have many minerals and dissolved salts which cannot be used for the agriculture purpose but can be treated and can be used for the household purpose and as well as industrial purpose. If you see the third the most important one is the underground water. This underground water have many dissolved salts which is the main source for the industrial purpose as well as household purpose. Now we will see how uh, this rainwater can be used and it contains mainly the dissolved gases because as the rainwater comes from the clouds takes the solids uh, it takes the gases and it, it forms the dissolved gases and after reaching out to the earth it dissolves whatever the salts will come across in its journey as river flows like silica or any sort of minerals which are available on the ground on the surface of the ground pond and lake water are the main sources of microorganisms as well as the disease causing insects now if you see the sea water it contains the most of the minerals and dissolved solids so that it makes the sea water salty so in countries where the water scarcity is there those countries purely they will depend on the sea water and they will use the process of reverse osmosis to desalinate it desalination is a technique that will be the main principle behind that is the reverse osmosis. We will come across in the later on stages of these methods. Now, if you talk about the underground water, the underground water, it contains the solids or the salts which contains the calcium and magnesium and iron and even sometimes the, the dissolved salts of silica also. This calcium and magnesium, it will be included into the groundwater from the rainwater flows onto the surface ground this rainwater will be filtered through the surface layers of the earth crust and it goes into the earth layers if you look at this diagram you can able to understand this is the land surface and the rainwater when it is been flowing and some of the water will goes inside through the gaps between the layers of soil and it will be accumulated and it will flow as as much as same as how the river water flows on the surface in the same way the ground water will flows inside the earth crust and while passing this journey because of high pressure and because of the increase in temperatures the water will dissolves whatever the salts will come across in between and it will be accumulated in the underground water and it may be the salts of calcium or magnesium and the iron and even some case the silica the most of this water contains the salts of calcium and magnesium and these salts are calcium bicarbonate magnesium bicarbonate calcium chloride calcium fluoride magnesium chloride and magnesium sulfide and calcium sulfide these salts are the main hardness causing salts of the underground water 
This underground water is the main source for the industrial purpose. Most of the industries they will dip, they will depend on this underground water. As we see further, if you see the usage of the water, the water usage. As we know, in water only the life has begun its journey. The origin of the life started in the sea water only. So we can know the importance of the water and the livelihood usage of the water in various purpose. If you see the household purpose, the mostly the water is used for the drinking purpose. It is noted that the drinking water first and foremost should not contain the microorganisms. You can see the underground water will not contain much microorganisms which causes the various types of disease but the stagnant water or the still water of pond and lake will contain most of the microorganisms. Even the rain water also, the pure the pure rain water also will not contain any sort of microorganisms rather when it comes onto the ground and when it mixes with the soil and when it runs through the river then the microorganisms will start living into the water. So most of the household purpose will also in India are being depending on this underground water. The next purpose of water if you see the industrial purpose it is most important one as an engineer we should know what type of water will be used in various types of industries we know that most of the beverage comp uh, companies if you start with the beverages the most of the beverage companies will have the water usage in large amount And this for the beverage companies also, the water should not contain the microorganisms or it should divide off these microorganisms. And if you see the textile company, in textile industries, in textile industries, the water will be used for the dyeing purpose. As dyes, the water to clean the dyes or to spray the dyes onto the cloths, this water will be used. So the water which uses in textile industries should not contain should not contain the suspended solids and as well as the dissolved salts. If dissolved salts are there in water, which will be used in textile industry, they may interact with the dyes and they may not give the definite color what we need. If you see in pharmaceutical industry the water used even that water should not contain the microorganisms, dissolved salts and as well as suspended salts. Because these presence of these salts may interfere the chemical reactions which will lead to the drugs formation. So, in pharmaceutical industries, the water should not contain all of these. And next, in sugar industry, the water is used for the cleaning and as well as for the, for the formation of molasses in case of industries which will in turn interact with the beverages industries. Hope you know, uh, we know that most of the beverage industries will depend on the sugar factories nearby. Even for the removal of the color sugar, the water will be used as a cleaning material. So even that water should not contain the dissolved solids of course, as well as the suspended particles. These are the main usages of the water. In turn, the most of the water will be used industrially and as well as the household purpose.